once Swami Vivekananda and Ramakrishna were sitting together and uh, Vivekananda asked Swami Ramakrishna, uh, how can I attain the state of God-realization and experience the bliss that you always abide in? This was the question of a young Vivekananda. Uh, I don't know how many of us know, Vivekananda spent just six years with his master, six years from the young age of 16 or 17 till he was 24, 25. That's it. And he concluded his life by the time he was 39. So the towering personality of Vivekananda that has inspired both the former President Barack Obama and the current Prime Minister Narendra Modi had a short span of 39 years. But he was what he was because he was his master's true disciple. That's what distinguished him. So, coming back to the story, uh, Ramakrishna smiled and there was a glass of juice in that room where they were sitting and there was this house fly that was buzzing around that glass of juice. So, Ramakrishna said, Naren, his maiden name was Narendra Nath Datta, so he used to call him Naren. The Bengali style, not even Naren, Noren. So, he told him, Noren, you see that house fly and the glass of juice. That house fly is hovering around the glass of juice, but its desire is to taste the juice. Vivekananda said, yes. So Ramakrishna said, when will it be able to taste the juice? So Vivekananda kept quiet. Ramakrishna said, when it falls into the glass of that juice, it will taste the juice and become one with that juice. But the risk factor is that it will lose its own identity. It will merge into the identity of that juice. When you are able to give up your own identity and let yourself lose to merge into divinity, that's when you will get the true taste of divinity. Till such point in time as you try to hold on to your individual identity and try and distinguish yourself as separate from the divine, you will neither be able to taste the divine nectar nor will you be able to become one with divine. Such a profound message because we are usually like that housefly hovering around various divine concepts, making no efforts to venture into the true content that that exalted principle has to provide to us. Stand at the shores of the ocean, guessing what is there in the womb of the ocean. At the shores of the ocean, you get only shells. If you want to understand the true treasure that the ocean has to provide, you have to delve deep into the ocean because that is where the treasures truly lie. There are two examples that I remember which are similar to this anecdote of the kind of mistakes that we make when we want to find divinity but we are so absorbed in our own pursuit of retaining our own identity or revelling in our so-called humanity. So in Shirdi Sai Baba's life there was an incident, there was this rich merchant. He had come to Shirdi Baba and said, I want Brahma Jnana. So Shirdi Baba laughed aloud. He said, I have so many people coming to me every day. Some ask for prosperity, some ask for children, some ask for blessings for a good life. But here is someone who has come to ask me for Brahma Jnana. And Shama was there uh, in, this, in the same uh, room and Shri Baba was laughing aloud. So this trader was a little taken aback. He thought he had done a great job by asking a question about Brahma Jnana, the highest knowledge. Then Shri Baba said, two days ago there was a rich man who was traveling to some place and a poor boy came running to him and said he wanted five rupees for medicines for his mother. But you know Shama, Shri Baba said, that rich man had 200 rupees in his pocket but he said I don't even have five rupees. The color of the face of this trader turned pale 
because he remembered what happened with him two days ago. The story which Shirdi Baba had narrated was his own story. He had 200 rupees in his pocket, 200 rupees way back in late 1800s. And the same 5 rupees story was his story. So he was absolutely taken aback. Then Baba looked at him and said, isn't this what happened to you two days back? So that man all of a sudden fell down at Shirdi Baba's feet. Shirdi Baba said, if you cannot feel the pain of your fellow man, and if you cannot relieve him of his agony, how can you ever attain divinity? First, develop the capability of identifying with your humanity. It is only then you can proceed on the path of divinity.